Let's learn how to check our work using LT Spice and Desmos. So let's say we want to convolve the this kind of triangle function where you come up uh, with a slope of one, then you go down with a slope of one at time equals uh, one, and then it flattens out at time equals two with the impulse response of a low pass filter shown here. So um, we want to find the convolution of a ramp with um, the exponential decay. Now we we're going to use the Laplace transform, but as a quick review, I have an RT convolved with the low pass and a delayed and scaled RT convolved with a low pass and another scaled and delayed ramp function times a low, uh, convolved with a low pass. Um, basically, we can just find one, the ramp convolved with the exponential decay and then uh, we'll call that G test and then we just uh, scale and delay those results so the ramp is 1 over s squared the transfer function of this particular exponential decay is a divided by s plus a uh, we can do a partial fraction expansion we get 1 over s squared 1 over s plus a scaled by 1 over a and 1 over s scaled by a. So what we get, this gets, we look it up, we get a ramp, we get 1 over a exponential decay, and we get a step divided by n exponential decay. And if I call this just a function, right, then I can say the f total of time, right, is just the original g test that isn't scaled or delayed minus 2 times g test so that's the scale and it's delayed by 1 plus g test delayed by 2 so really I just found one convolution with the Laplace transform method and then just did scale and delay now do I have this correct uh, I don't know so over here I, in Desmos, I've defined a step function. I'm thinking maybe the hyperbolic tangent might be a better way than the, uh, than the other way I do. I define the ramp. Here's my low pass impulse response. Here's my VN, which is in black. You can see that. And then I have V out. And here I have the convolution integral. All right, so that's, I'm finding it numerically. I'm going to turn that off, and this should you should just see red. And then I have the actual function that I showed where you have g-test. That's the one uh, analytical solution of the convolution, and then I just scale and delay. And then when I highlight them, right, you can see that they eventually uh, will overlap, you know, 100%. So at least my derivation matches a numerical convolution. Now let's say the actual question is you have this triangle wave here and you want to put it into a low pass filter. Well, LT Spice is a convolution program, right? And here I've got a inverting, uh, non inverting op amp uh, with an ideal gain of two. So I just as a quick thing, I set the period to, to 10 so that it will have time to completely exponential decay very close to zero. If I set a different triangle wave, it, it wouldn't really work. And to show you what I mean is if I just set the period to this, I'll get some weird function. But really, it's a non-repeating function, and so I just set a, whoop, 
I just give it a period of much longer than the re region of interest. Now, you can't really export a numerical file from Desmos and read it into LT Spice. I've, I've looked, but I can't seem to see where it exports its data. However, LT Spice has no problem exporting data, and you would just click here, File, File, where is it? Export data as text, and you would just click on the two waveforms of interest, browse to where you want to look at it, and um, just press OK, and then it'll save. All right. Now, the way to read it, you need to process it a little bit. So you read it into Excel. So file, open. Uh, it's, where did I put it? It's on the desktop. And it's a text file. That's just what it happened to be for me. And it needs to be delimited. And it seems like the tab worked just fine. Now, um, I do need to edit these. Desmos doesn't like this scientific notation. So all I have to do is format the cells to number. Um, you know, there's, I set a lot of decimal points. Okay. And so now all I have to do is highlight this. Copy the data. Click in Desmos and uh, Control V and just paste it in. All right, and here's these data points. Now, right away, we see that the red dots overlap the input pretty well. Um, so that's good. But these blue dots are not aligning with my, my lines. And the reason is, is that when I did the original convolution, I left out the gain of two here. So, oh, I found a, you know, you could think of it as that I found a mistake in my work. And so now it's just a factor of two. So I would multiply it by two. And then I would multiply it by two here. And sometimes it, um, Desmos is a bit slow. Oh. Okay. Now, um, that didn't work either. Okay. And what it was is I had on purpose got in the time constant wrong, wrong, I put in two. So now that when I put in one, it should match. And so now my, my data from LT Spice matches my analytical equation, matches an alternative way to numerically convolve. Um, now, Scientific, for, for lab reports and stuff, it might be better to load all of this into Python and then you could subtract your, like let's say it was measured data versus theoretical data. You could subtract it and then uh, come up with a percentage difference and you could say that you matched your theory within 5% or 10%. Um, we're not really proving they're equivalent um, mathematically. This is really just a numerical equivalence. And this is how, uh, you know, one of the ways that I check my work. The reason why, um, even though LT Spice has behavioral voltage sources, um, it would be a little bit hard to do that scale and delay function. 
um, I would have all these voltage sources to make it happen. And so it, for this kind of function, um, I would export it and then either do the equivalence in Python or in this case Desmos because it's homework. Well, 